If I snap my fingers, he said, three sacred pomegranate trees will appear in the window box. Piffle, she said. When I clear my throat, 17 talking dolphins will leap from my tooth mug and perform my wishes before I tell them. Cockalily, he said. One of my vultures can send 80 rockets with multiple nuclear warheads and wipe out every Russian city. Fiddledy doodle, she said. Any hair on my body can activate lasers that will cut your rockets to pieces one microsecond after launching. Exactly, he said. Stalemate. Let's call a truce. <laughs> I'll do the washing up. You let me wear your black frilly nighty and play with the plastic duck in the bath. <laughs> Men, she said, always having the last word. Just to prove how many ant words there are in English, here's a nonsense poem made almost entirely from ant words. When you hear one, press the buzzers on your chairs. Don't expect to understand all of the words, because some of them are quite hard. And don't expect all of them to be pronounced ant. Ant nonsense. In Santa Claus's pantry, an ant of noted gallantry who joined up in the infantry was drinking vino spumante more allegro than andante with the infanta of Shantong when Santa grabbed the decanter, wantonly tripped on his reindeer's antler and panted, let's have some fun. But out of the Atlantic, with eyes as huge as lanterns, a hideous, gigantic, antipodean tarantula triumphantly hissed, Tantara! You all shall be my banquet, you ant, you drunk old Santa, and you fragrant infanta, sweet as a currant bun. You termagant antagonist, the ant replied, shaking his fist. The infanta is my niece. The infanta in a mantilla danced a wild tarantella with frantic romantic antics in very scanty panties to Antarctic sea shanties on the antique mantelpiece. Infantile old Santa mocked the gargantuan tarantula with banter and elephantine laughter. Ho, 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 ho! While the ant eloped with an antelope to Constantinople and lived happy ever after. ta -ra. Are you ready for another nonsense poem? I hope so. Because this, here's one with a lot of those O-U-G-H words in it, like cough. <laughs> but it's also got some O-F-F -F and U-F-F -F words which are spelt differently. So press your buzzers whenever you hear an O-U-G-H word. Are you a toff with a diamond cuff? who'll doff his topper with a civil servant cough Ahem. and never ever say, stop it, you stupid old buffer poo, but smirk and coo. Or are you gruff, think yourself tough, then I'll duff you up till you shuffle and snuffle. Don't be so rough! Are you trying to woo my bit of stuff by giving her a mink fur coat and muff? Well, I'm trying to, too. There isn't enough room for the two of us, so you can puff your way upstairs to the loo in a huff. I'm through with you. Shove off! If you'll give me a kiss and be my girl, jump on my bike, we'll do a ton. We'll explode from the city in a cloud of dust and roar due west of the setting sun. We'll bounce the days all over the beach, pop them like seaweed and scatter ourselves callous as kids with candy floss into all of the shapes of all of the shells. We'll go as giddy as merry-go-rounds, bump with a crash like dodgem cars, float in a basket of coloured balloons, then jump in a rocket and whiz for Mars. If you love to be blown by a roar of wind, if you love to twist and spin and twirl, if you love to crash on the shore like waves, then give me a kiss and be my girl. I love to be blown by a roar of wind. I love to watch the sea asleep and breathe in salt and fresh-caught shrimps as we wind our way through the snoring streets. I'll rave in the cellar till the band drops dead, but I want you to sing on your own guitar for no one but me and a moonlight oak, then dive in the silent lake for a star. I love to spin the night away. I love to hold you dark and still. 
I love your kick that drives us miles. I love the view from the top of the hill. But if you'll give me the crashing waves and sing me the blues of the sea as well, then whether there's candy floss or not, I'll give you a kiss and be your girl. Will you still love me then? After the drums and throttle roar, after the blossom froth of sex, after the wings of swoop and soar, after the tossing stallion's neck, will you still love me then? When drums and throttles splutter to stop, when mildews chewed the petals grey, when tossing manes hot nostrils drop, when dazzling feathers molt and splay, will you still love me then? When we're dragging steps on an empty road, and a vacant stare in the empty sky, and the whole wide future's been narrowed to one last whisper here, now, die. Will you still love me then? Will you? Because love can turn an empty sky to an unbounded view. And one morning, I was driving round to Flui when I saw eight giraffes standing in the grass near the track. And so my natural instinct was to stop my car and get out. And I was standing looking at the giraffes, and the giraffes are looking back at me. And have you ever tried to get eight giraffes into a four by three photographic frame? It's almost impossible. And anyhow, I was standing there looking at the giraffes, <clears throat> and suddenly there's a hooting on a horn. And a car behind me, which is claiming that I'm blocking the way and wants to get past. Well, um, it turned out it was a little old couple who were in, apparently in a great hurry to get past. I don't know why, because the track, which was just a track, it just went round in a circle round the reserve. And there was nothing more exciting to be seen that morning than the eight giraffes. But anyhow, they got, they got very angry and they reported me to the warden for breaking the regulations and getting out of my car. So this is my answer to them. On being surrounded by eight giraffes in Hlhlui Game Reserve. You are not allowed to walk on the grass, said the elderly couple, in case you step on the giraffe. <laughs> Am I allowed to breathe this air, I answered, in case I suck a giraffe up my nose? We are not responsible for the regulations, they said. We merely drive through the forest very fast, wishing to make quite sure that if anyone notices dragons, centaurs, phoenixes, unicorns, earth spirits, wood spirits, water spirits, or even the Lord God himself walking in the cool of the evening, they do not, under any circumstances, leave their car and worship. 